Hello, this is Quinn with Transmitter Solutions. Uh, we're excited to have you all here this morning to uh, listen to this webinar on our Prima Access Control System. So what we're going to do uh, this morning is I want you guys to be able to ask questions and make sure that you understand this and feel comfortable with the, at least the introduction to it uh, by the end of this webinar. And so what we've focused on for this webinar is basically introducing uh, the features what it can do, what it looks like, how the software operates and, and feels, so you can see what your end user will see as you install it, and so you can know better. Uh, really the simplicity and the ease of getting this set up and going and, and uh, the functionality of it, because there really is uh, almost no application that this won't work for. This is Prima Access Control. We released this product at the ISC West Trade Show in Las Vegas about three weeks ago. It is an extremely robust yet simple option for access control and it is, it's cost effective. There's a lot that it can do uh, and it's not hard to manage, hard to use for, and hard to install, which is important for you as the installer and also important for the end user as they're going to be managing and adding and deleting and keeping track of uh, the software and system. So we're going to go ahead and start off by showing you a quick marketing video that we have and you should be able to hear this on your end, so go ahead and turn your speakers up. Our focus with uh, manufacturing and making this access controller was to take all of the functionality and features or many of the functionality and features that we found in our competition and put them into a different looking design with an easy to use back end installation and uh, a really cost effective way. We know that there are many systems out there that have a lot of options, a lot of options and we looked at those and thought you know we could offer those but really how often are they used in 80 to 90 percent of installations and so we wanted to make it so that the, the really important things, the things that are used every day through an access controller, we made easier and more simple to use and made it look clean. We have focused on a different look than most of the access controllers you'll see. This is what you're seeing now, a look at our four-door central is what we call it or controller which is a term that's typically used with our power supply and a battery backup. We have, the way that we manufactured this was using the DIN rail setup, which you can see here. So this central will go onto a rail in the back, this rail here, which is DIN rail mounted. And then we took and made a very easy sticker that we put on that central, which gives you all of the inputs and all of the outputs on the central and what, what they're for and there's a breakdown and we'll show you that in just a minute. So the wiring and installation of it is very simple. So as you first wire it up and install, this is what it will look like. And then once it's finished with the install, you put another cover over it. So it looks like this in the end and then this box will close and it has a tamper switch and all of those things. So we wanted it to be a clean and sleek look uh, that's not gonna you know, stand out if it's in an IT room or at a door depending on the type of application that you have. But this is a typical, typical setup for a four-door controller with the power supply and the DIN rail housing. In our, our pricing and in all of our marketing, this is the setup that you will receive and that you pay for. So when you see prices, the price includes the central, which comes in either two doors or four doors, the power supply, a space for the battery backup like you just saw, 
and this housing. It comes with all, with all of those things included. The centrals, like I mentioned, will come in two or four doors, and these can be expanded up to a thousand doors. And you'll see how that's done extremely easily through the software once I show you when we get into that portion of it. Like we've mentioned, and you've probably seen through the cut sheets and the marketing materials we've sent out, we have three options to choose from. And again, this is labeled in our price sheets as well, which we'll send to each of you. You have our regular TCP IP option, which is basically uh, you, you hardwire it with power from the power supply, and then you run a network cable uh, directly into our central. And that's the way that, would, that it would communicate on the network is that way. We have the power over ethernet option, which is the same exact thing, except it's a, it's a power switch, power network switch, which means you're gonna be receiving your power, as you know, uh, directly from that switch, so there's no, there's no need for a power supply. And then we have the wireless, which is probably what most people are interested in this system. The wireless option is uh, unique to us in the way that we've done it, because we did away with uh, some of the more complex ways that competitors do it, because we feel like there was, too, it got too expensive to do it some ways and it got too complex to do it other ways. So what we've done and the way that our wireless works is we plug in a wireless dongle and have the software written on our hardware to plug in a wireless dongle and through the settings in the software, which I'll show you, you are able to go on and locate through the YLAN settings all of the available Wi-Fi networks in the building or job or wherever this is being installed. It then communicates and attaches to that existing Wi-Fi network so that you can go put it at a door, at a gate outside, somewhere remote, uh, and it will commu communicate wirelessly so you don't need to run network cable. A lot of cost is incurred through running network cable either uh, from the door uh, to the IT room or the IT room to the door, and then running the, the, the readers and everything else that has to go along with it. So our wireless is connecting to an existing Wi-Fi. Now, we've overcome a lot of the issues. People will say, well, what about uh, range? What if I've got a front gate or a, a back door that's real far away or something that's a little bit remote? We can extend the range through Wi-Fi extenders that will plug into an outlet. Uh, you can ex we can extend it pretty far. Uh, we'd like to say up to a mile. It depends on the application, but this is a good option. One of the reasons and one of the main reasons that we've decided to go this route is because we have competitors out there who, who do offer Wi-Fi, but they will create their own network through, uh, through their controller, and then it communicates with the network. Problem there is that if the network goes down, which networks do, then their systems don't allow you to get into the door regularly. The functions stop working. So what we've done is our system is a Linux computer. And so it's a small Linux computer. And so what will happen is if the network ever drops, whether it's connected through hardwire, network cable, PoE, or our wireless, if the network or Wi-Fi ever goes down, our system continues to operate normally. The only time that they would understand or realize that the network has gone down is if they log into the software, which is web-based, it will show them that the network's down and it will actually say in the warnings that there are centrals offline. And so they won't be able to add people or they won't be able to update anything on the system until they fix, fix that network connection. Now, one of the good things is that let's say the network is down for a day and we have five doors that are running, uh, running on our, our centrals. You can still pull reports that went on during the day the network was down. Our system stores up to 1 million events and so if the network was down yesterday and I come into the office in the morning and need to run a report to see who was, who was here last night, I can still pull that report once the network connection is fixed and pull all that information back off my central. So that's a huge benefit to this system is no matter how the installation is, uh, it will continue to work whether the network is, is on or off and we'll be, have all that data so you can still pull it when the network's down. Which is, a, which is a big benefit. Um, we also wanted to let you know that if you choose wireless or PoE, that doesn't mean that every door in the building has to use a wireless central. All of our centrals communicate together. So you could do our regular TCP IP centrals, put a couple of those on a job, and then you have one or two doors that are hard to reach and you don't wanna to have to run network cable to, you can put our wireless ones out there or vice versa with the power over ethernet. You can 
on one install, you can use any of our three options that we have uh, for our essentials, and they will all communicate together and work on the same system, which is very nice. So it makes it makes jobs very customizable. There's really no job you can look at any job and say, okay, I'm worried about these three doors and running cable to them. What can I do? Well, I can put uh, one four door central for all the doors that I I'm fun running cable to the central, and then the other two doors I'll put. Uh, a central on each of those and, and uh, make them wireless. You can also power up your accessories, your door accessories through the uh, through our centrals and I'll show you how that's done here in, in wiring. Uh, some of the features that we wanted to point out is there's no server needed. Our software is web-based so that there's no uh, main computer that has to be used or software loaded on anything. It's all accessed through an IP address through a website and you'll see we do have options uh, for phones and tablets as well as a computer. We are, we've we defined the difference between both of them. There are a lot of companies that will say, yeah, it can work on a phone or tablet, and that's true because you can open up a, a website on a phone or tablet, but then you're pointing and zooming and it can get uh, a little bit messy. So we've, we've defined the difference between uh, our software being accessed on a computer and then a phone and a tablet, and we'll show you how that's done here in just a minute. So there's no ser server needed, which equals remote management through our web-based software. It can do parking integration through Wigan receivers and transmitters. Uh, if they have a front gate and they want to access those with transmitters, it can be done and managed through our system. Elevator integration, like we mentioned, the operating software system that we use is Linux. You can power your door accessories directly through the controller. Uh, there is a maximum amount of power that can be put through the controller, uh, but we'll show that to you. So if you have a wireless application and you put our central at a door, you can power up your maglock, your strikes, your card readers, your request exit, all of those things powered directly into our central, staying within the power limits. And uh, it, it will save you, you time uh, wiring extra power and power supplies and all of those things. One of the other main benefits is defining your own central. All of our, all of our centrals come out of the box the exact same with the exact same hardware and software inside of them. When you install a system, it is up to you as the installer uh, to define your master. Now, this is done by default as the first system you log into defines itself as the master. So what we mean is if you, again, going back to the, the five-door job, let's say you have a five-door installation, four of those doors you're hardwiring back to the IT room where you have one of our four-door centrals. And then one of the doors is hard to reach, so you have our wireless central. These are communicating with each other. When you first start the system, and we'll show you how to get installed here in just a minute, it, the system's going to say, okay, you logged into uh, the four-door central's IP address. Therefore, I'm going to define that as the master. Now, any updates you make or report, any updates you make to that master will automatically push out to the now-defined slave. If you don't want that one to be the master, you can change it through the software very easy. But do know that they are all communicating to each other on the network wirelessly, and the master is pushing out any updates you have to all of them. One of the good things about this is that you can still individually access each central. So if something were to happen to the master central or something was to happen to one of the slave centrals, you can individually access that and kind of find out what's going on or replace it and back it up through another one on the system because they're all talking the same language and they're all, they all have the same data and information. So that, that's a big thing is that we want you as the installer to define your master. It will default for you and that will save you time, but you can define your master and then all the information is put out to the slaves. Each one can be wirelessly, each one on the job, each central can be wirelessly uh, logged into through their IP address to make any changes to, directly to that one or, or to see what's going on, which is nice and easy for you as the installer. Like we mentioned, the wiring for this is extremely easy. Our job is to make, make it so that you can get start with a new product, which is Prima Access Control, get in the job, wire it easily, and not have a ton of tech issues. We want you, we understand that your time is important and you've got other things to do, and so we've tried to make this as easy as possible. So you can see here that this is a central, this is a four-door central that we're looking at. And you can see each door has a list of the inputs and outputs. So you can come here and you can see, I'll zoom in a little bit. You can see for door one, and this is our RS-485 central, 
and we'll explain the difference here in a minute. You've got your positive and negative in RA and RB. Now we can come down here and we can see what RA and RB are, which is the RS485 reader bus. And you can see in, in monitor which one is which. So T plus and T minus, we can see here is transistor output max 500 milliamps at 12 volts. So if I bring you down here, we can see that our transistor 5 and 6 are where we're going to attach our electric strike or our mag lock, mag lock, and they can be powered right off that with 12 volt DC max 500 milliamps. So we wanted to make your life as easy as possible by, by giving you this extremely easy installation uh, set up and wiring diagram that's directly on the central. Each central comes with this sticker and a breakdown of, of where you can plug everything in. So just an easy clean installation is what we've focused on in, in making your life easy as an installer. You can see here we've got our, our uh, inputs and outputs for the battery backup, uh, door locks, all of those things, and then we do have two additional relays on the centrals that you can use for anything that you might need. And again, this is all explained in, in the manual. We have two options for this system. Uh, we have what we call standard security and another option is what we call high security. The standard security option that we offer is our Wigan, which is the more popular of the two and is what we, uh, what 95% of installers install on access control jobs. Uh, the Wigan system will use uh, 26 through 37 bit readers and credentials. These are some of the readers that we offer. Those of you that are current customers of ours, I'm sure you've tried these out and have seen how well they work. But these are just HID compatible 26 bit um, card readers and card reader keypads that we offer here. The higher security that we talk about is RS-485. We wanted to offer RS-485 because the, the range on which you can wire the reader to the central is double that of what Wigan is. So if you have a long run and you don't want to use a wireless central, you're going to pull your card reader wires from door the entrance door all the way back to your IT room and you've got a long run. The RS-485 readers are the way to go. You can go 800 feet with an RS-485 reader. And these are the options that we have for those, an RS-485 reader and an RS-485 keypad card reader. The credentials that are used for RS-485 are MicFair or DeskFire, which are just a little bit higher encryption and higher security uh, than Wigan is. So that is an option, uh, an option that we really like. We think it's nice to have a higher security and just be a little bit different than some of the other installers out there. But both options uh, are available in Centrals, both the Wigan and the RS-485 and both have the same user interface software. So the software that you'll see is the same software you'd use for Wigan or RS-485. So you can be comfortable in knowing that if you install one job Wigan and then another job RS-485, once you know the software, it's the same installation and same, same backend that you'll be using. Uh, again, I mentioned we have simple software. We focused on making sure that the software is uh, easy for the installer to use and also easy for your end user to use because they're the ones in the end that are going to be using it uh, on a daily and weekly basis. So we focused on making it simple. We're going to show it to you here in just a minute, but like I mentioned, we have we have distinguished and defined the difference between someone who's going to log on a PC or computer and what that's going to look like for them and someone who's going to be remote like accessing it through a phone or a tablet because we understand that can be a headache when you're searching a regular website on a phone or tablet having to point and zoom and, and it can just get a little bit confusing. So we've, we've differentiated those two and we're going to show you that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and click on our software. This is the main screen you'll see when you first access the software. We call it our Start Nova and our Start Nova Drive. The Start Nova requires Adobe Flash Player. So the Start Nova is what they're going to use as you can see on a, on a computer. And the Start Nova Drive is what they're going to use as you can see on a tablet or phone. So when you first install the system, the installation steps are extremely easy. We have what's called the discovery tool, which is downloaded by you as the installer through our website. The discovery tool is what allows you to change the IP addresses to designated IP addresses that are open at, at your job. You can change those IP addresses through our discovery tool. So basically what you do, you can do it at your office or you can do it on the job. 
you can either connect directly to your computer at the office and open our discovery tool and it's going to find our central and pull it up and then there's a quick button you can press that says change IP address. You change that and then you type in the IP address that's going to be open for you at your, at your job. That central's ready to go. So you can do it remotely at your office. You can also do it on the job. So once you've got all of your centrals installed and on the network, you will open up our discovery tool and it will show, it will list every central that is installed on that network. So if you've got the five door job and you've got one four door central and one two door central, it will show that there are two centrals and it will show their stock IP address that they come with. Then you'll click on that central and you will change the IP address to whatever IP address you're using for that install. And then with that IP address, is what you'll access the software through. So I've typed in my IP address of the system we have installed here, our demo system, and this is what pops up. The software automatically opens up. I will now click on my Start Nova software, and it's going to open up a username and a password. There's a default username and password for the first time access, which I'll log in with. And then the first thing it's going to do when it opens up the home page is it's going to alert you the first time you access it to set your time to the current time. And it will also say, which mine hasn't because I've logged in, we recommend you change your password. Click here to change your username and password. And that's what you'll change your username and password to whatever uh, your customer wants so that they can access it and, and only them so no one else can get on it. And then it's going to ask you uh, another question if you want to update your IP address in the system. And that, that's up to you. The IP address is changed in the hardware. In the software, you can change it to, to show the same IP address if you want. So those are the first two things that are going to pop up. This is the home screen. This is what the software will look like for all of you. We've dropped in some, some dummy data here. But this is the home screen that you'll see. Some of the nice things are on the left-hand side of the screen, this is your navigation pane. This is where you're going to get to the different areas of the software. This is the home screen that you'll see. These are live events that are happening as you're sitting on the software and that have been happening, the latest events that are going on. So you can quickly see those from your users. Uh, the door was unlocked by Mihoff and he's with account Prima Systems, the time, the date, all of those things. And these can all be drilled down on uh, in more detail. And we'll show you that in just a minute, but this is just a quick view that you can see of what's going on. You can see off to the right hand side the system inf information. This will show you at a quick glance the total number of doors that you have installed on this job, the total number of users in the system, the number of registered events, the time, and the database side size usage. So this is just a quick reference guide for you to see what's going on. Then you also have the disconnected centrals and readers. So if there is, there, there's been a problem and one of your card readers or centrals has lost connection to the network or something's gone wrong, it will alert you here and it will show that. So you can automatically see rather than having to search in a bunch of places to try to find out what's going on, you can quickly look here and see, oh, okay, that one's disconnected for this reason. As we can see here, the main entry has been disconnected. And that will show us that and then we can click on that and see that the reader status is offline. The central is online, so there's something wrong with the reader on that central that we'll need to figure out. Okay. Um, and then you can see any errors. So there was a reader disconnected, and this error page is very nice to see what's going on. So you've got your disconnected centrals and readers, your errors, and then you also have warnings, anything that's happened that's out of, out of the ordinary. So there's an unknown PIN number on the May 8th uh, at the main entry, and there was no access to system administrator at the long distance reader on the 8th as well. So you can see what's going on there. You can see doors left open and unlocked and blocked doors, all at a quick glance on the main page. That's our home page. Now we can go to the events. The events page allows you to search for events and search for events specific time period. So these are the most recent events. You can search for specific, specific time periods here. You can also search like you would for uh, Google. I can type in a user and it's going to show me everything that that user has done. So I'm searching Miha and it's showing me everything that he's done on this demo system. The department he's in, the user, the hardware that it was on and the description. So the door was unlocked for him, the door was locked, the door was unlocked. He was at a, a given an access group and his user profile was updated. So you can quickly search and see what's going on or you can say I need to know what happened for the entire day so I'm going to drill down using the search criteria on the right hand side. So this is one way to search events 
Uh, it's extremely easy and user friendly, as you can see, and it gives you the time, the hardware names, the user, the department, and the description. Now, if I go into user access rights, this is where we're going to add our users, uh, where you can add, assign them groups, add rules, all of these certain things are done in here. We recommend when you're first starting, uh, the easiest thing to do is to first come in and locate and manage your hardwares and essentials, which will show you how to do and get those up on the system, and then to create your groups, and then create your users, and then assign users a group. So if I want to come in and go ahead and click on, we, you can see we've got some users already added. I'm going to add a user. I can import it from a CSV Excel file, or I can just add it here. I'm going to go ahead and add a test. You can put your department, your user ID, email, phone number, address, any remarks. And then you can also do valid from and valid to. So let's say it's a gym uh, or an apartment complex that really monitors uh, their monthly payments. You can say, I only want this person valid for this amount of time, and then they're, they will be deactivated. Their system, their username and credentials will still be in here. Their card just won't be granted access to the building. Now, if they go show their card to a card reader, it will it will, and they're out of the time of their parameters that were set, will, were set, it will show you that there was a card that's been, that's been uh, suspended that was trying to access the, the building at this time. So that's kind of nice to see. Pin number is where you can set their keypad number. So if you want this person to have a keypad number, you can set it there. And then you can add up to eight cards per user here. And you type those in. You can also individually set uh, anti-passback. So if you if you set anti-passback on a certain door, you can come in and say, okay, I want this test user. Ignore those anti-passback rules. This person can get in and out uh, whenever, uh, as many times as their card's been shown. So don't let those rules apply to them. Then you can save this. Once you save this, it's telling me that card's already in use. So let me go ahead and save again changes were saved. You can see that you now have the option to change the picture if also where you add a picture, where you can go into their access rights and assign them groups. The group that will always come default is a group of all, which gives them access to all of the doors at all times of the day. And you can delete that if you don't want that, or add that, or edit it. So I'm going to go ahead and give him that. I can look at latest events for just this user. I can look at the card settings, which is, this, this is for offline readers, which is something that will come in the future, so you don't need to worry about that too much. And I, so, I can also come into your, to the account. So if I want this person to have access to uh, the software, I can give them local admin rights or administrator rights. If I just want them to be a user, I define them as a user, and then they cannot log on to the software and change anything. If I give them administration rights, then I can set them a username and a password, which will be their login credentials for the software to remotely access and manage. There are administration uh, credentials. A system administrator has access to do anything, add hardware, delete hardware, uh, which is you could delete and mess up centrals if you wanted to. You can add users, run reports, all those things. And then there's administrator, which has a little less rights in your local admin, which can basically add and delete users and run reports. And then just a user who, who has uh, no access to the software but is in the system. Um, so that's where you're going to set that and save that. And this is how a user is added. You can see it's extremely easy to do and extremely easy to set up. And then you'd save that. And I'm going to ignore the changes, and that's OK. You can save that, and that test user is in there. And you can quickly see their department, their cards, and their access groups. If I click on uh, this user, for instance, you can see on the right-hand side you can quickly tell what's going on. So Mihad, the department of Prima Systems, he has he's part of the access group all. So he has rights to everything. And then you can look down here and see that he has rights. All of these are doors, entrances that are locked. Okay, red means locked. He has rights to all of these. These are his rights. So you can quickly at a glance see what they've got and what's going on. So if I double click on that reader, I can see he's got zero to 24 hour access. When he shows his card, it is an open feature. So it will not unlock all the doors, but it will just open that door and then he can get in. And then uh, he has rights to any of those. So you can see those quickly, all of the rules that are set for each individual door if you want to. You can assign groups. Uh, 
if I wanted all three of these people to be in a group, you can you can hold control, click on all of them, and then you can manage groups, and you can add a group to numerous people at one time rather than doing it all individually. This system, if I go to manage group, this system does have the ability to do schedules, which I'll show you in just a minute, so you can do automatic lock and unlock schedules. It also has the ability to do first in unlock. So you can set in a group that if I was to show up at 5 a.m. and the automatic unlock schedule is at 7 a.m., my card will unlock all of the doors or a certain door. Maybe it only unlocks one door for the rest of the day and then it will automatically lock uh, when it's supposed to at 5 p.m. Or you can just set it to when that person comes in, even if they're early, only open the door for them and then lock it back up until the automatic open schedule. You have the ability to customize and change all of these things. So if I want to add a group, I go ahead and go add a group. I'm going to name the group. And then you can see, if I go to the manage schedule, I can now change, add, or edit what schedule this group is allowed on. So I'm going to say I'm going to add a time schedule. You can do intervals, you can do times. So this one's from 8 to 1600 on Monday through Friday. And I'm also going to allow Saturday and Sundays. And you can change your time down here or right here. So I'm going to say I want it from, uh, let's say, 6 a.m. to 1600, and I'm going to save that. You could add intervals and remove intervals. Like I said, it's all very customizable through the software to do anything you want. Automatic open and close times, unlock on first card, only un unlock every door on first card, only unlock this door on first card, all of these things. There is also uh, holiday schedules that you can do. And all, and all of those things. The calendaring and the groups are, is extremely detailed. So that's how you did that. you'd add a group and add uh, rights and rules to that person. And you can see here what they'd have access to. So this group has access to all of these. Again, we're going th over this pretty quickly just to give you an idea of how robust and how much it can do. Uh, we will be doing a live two-hour video training next month. Uh, we're going to start a a system called the Prima Premier Dealer Training, and what that is is if you attend two of our webinars, our live webinars that are going to be two hours long, which are detailed trainings, if you attend two of those a year, you will automatically get a discount pricing, which is our five plus quantity pricing, which you'll see, which we'll send to each of you. So we're going to set up that program, which will be nice. But as you can see, the system is not hard to to get going and the features and functionality is very nice. The last thing we'll show you is the locations and hardware. Locations and hardware is the first place you're going to come. So you have installed all of your controllers, all of your centrals on the job. Now you're going to log into the IP address of just one of them. Just one of them you're going to log into and then you're going to come to locations and hardware. What you're going to do when you come in here is this will be blank when you first come in. We've set ours up already. If you go to manage hardware, and then manage centrals, you will see now that I've got my alpha central. I only have one central on this system, on this demo unit. It's going to pull that up. Again, this will be blank. So if I go to manage centrals, what will happen is when you first come into this and it's blank, this window is going to appear. And it will pop up all of the centrals that you have installed on that network. Here is just a bunch of uh, centrals that are installed near our demo. So it's going to pop up all the centrals that you have on this network. And again, this is all wireless. You've got either our, you've either got our wireless one communicating through Wi-Fi, our power over Ethernet, or our TCP IP hardwired back in the network switch. It will find those, and then when you click on options, it will have you add new central. Once you click on that, it's going to pop up in this box here, which is central. So we've already added this, this alpha. And then all of them will come down this list, and you'll have all of your centrals here. You can see that this is the master central. So when you log into this one's IP address, it will update and drop all of that information into any of the ones below it, which is nice. So the installation and setup is very easy. Now, if I double click on this, this will now get me to the settings for my door and the readers on each door. So what I'm looking at now is my one and only central that I have on this demo. It is an alpha four-door power over Ethernet. That's what that says. This is its IP address. This is its MAC address, which 
uh, we don't need to go into right now. And these are their statuses of the door. So you can see door one was just opened. Someone opened door one, it went green. Red is, red is locked. DM is door monitor, RE is request to exit. So what will happen is when you come here, this will, this will be blank as well, and you do search readers. And when you click on search readers, it's gonna, it knows that there's four doors on this central, and it's gonna find those readers. So you can see on this install, it's showing a 72-bit reader uh, is online and a long distance RFID reader outside at the gate entrance is online. And it's gonna show those, and then we have a main entry which is offline. So then you will go in and you can, uh, you will add these. These have all been added, but you will add these readers and then they're gonna pop up just like it does here, readers, and it will fill in up here. And you can name these whatever you want. You're able to name them and change the names, but it'll fill in up here. So if I'm looking at my 72-bit reader, which is on an entrance, it is enabled. My reader status is online, so I know it's working. We've named it the 72 bits reader, and it's going through a, a Wigan converter, which is just Wigan. It's connected to door three, okay? You can change this to whatever you want to open a different door. So I can go to advanced settings, and I can say, although this is connected to door three, I, when it triggers, I want it to open door two. The reader directory is entry. You can change it to exit, pass through, or entry and exit. Just more detail on the report. You can set the tamper sensitivity. Uh, if they're messing with the reader, this sensitivity will let you know, depending on how much you set it. And you can set a card timeout. So the card won't be read again until this timeout is over, similar to anti-passback. So all those settings are allowed. Then you can come down here and you can look at your door. So there are four doors on this and three readers. So for door one, you can change all of the settings you want right here. So I want my electric lock or my mag lock to hold open for eight seconds. I want the door, allowed door open time before it sends me an alert through to my software to show uh, 30 seconds, so the door's allowed open for 30 seconds. If it's open for longer than that, then uh, it will set off an alarm. And then uh, you can set all of your settings here, normally closed, normally closed, you can choose whether normally open or unused, and this is where you can set your automatic schedules for automatic open and close time. You can also change your electric lock, open voltage, all this is detailed, so the software is very manageable. So. As you've seen, just to wrap up to go through, the software is extremely easy to use. It is remotely accessed and you have options of wireless, wireless centrals for hard to reach doors, power over ethernet, and uh, TC, regular TCP IP. So what we'll do now is we're gonna field some questions uh, for any of you, those.